and I remember my first impression of disappointment. Is that all? And I remembered that I had all these absorbing material. So when it faded, I tipped the welding glass and looked down at the sand. Now, you know, it was before dawn and quite dark. But when I tipped the welding glass, looked down at the sand, it was as though you removed the curtain in the dark room and the bright sun came in. And then I was impressed. Nuclear reactors could, <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. President, nuclear reactors could provide power almost indefinitely. Greenhouses could maintain plant life. Animals could be bred and slaughtered. Mr. President, we must not allow a mine shaft gap. Sir, I have a plan. Einstein's famous equation, E equals MC squared, told us that energy and mass were interchangeable. It gave us the knowledge to build weapons of mass destruction and the knowledge to understand how our universe was born. When a nuclear bomb explodes, a tiny amount of matter is completely annihilated and converted into energy. But in the Big Bang, the exact opposite happened. Pure energy was converted into matter. How is it possible to construct heavy objects out of objects that uh, don't weigh anything? And the answer to that challenge comes from Einstein's second law, m equals e divided by c squared, it suggests the possibility of explaining mass purely in terms of energy. In fact, really, this should be called Einstein's first law, or his, maybe his zeroth law, because this is the form that he actually had in his original paper. Does the inertia of a body depend on its energy content? So right from the beginning, Einstein was thinking of the possibility of creating mass out of pure energy. And remarkably enough, that's what actually happens in our modern theory of quarks and gluons and the strong interactions. While we see the outward explosion as a supernova, this masks the inward implosion the core is collapsing into the most dangerous object in the universe. The density becomes so great in the center that gravity sucks in time and space itself from the outside universe. A black hole is born. The difference between an explosive atomic bomb and its inverse, an implosive mass bomb, is obvious. Because its combustible is the external mass of the cosmos, a mass bomb only needs a small quantity of detonator to explode, which can be produced in a super collider on Earth. Thus, mass bombs can have any size as long as they find mass to keep growing. The smallest ones, called novas, explode planets and stars, leaving behind a trail of destruction. Some called quasars blow up entire galaxies. Astronomers even speculate that the origin of the universe was the Big Bang of a mass bomb. Now CERN will try to replicate the Big Bang to explore the limits of entropy, creating mass bombs without any safety measure here on Earth. And in the collision point, we will get a temperature which is 10 to the 16 Kelvin. Now this is a billion times the temperature in the center of the sun. Now in the center of the sun you have already roughly 10 million degrees and this is a billion times that temperature. And now knowing that temperature we can actually calculate at what time the universe had this temperature to see with, with time we are actually recreating. And in fact it turns out to be somewhere around between a tenth and a hundredth of a billionth of a second after the birth of the entire universe. When the visible universe was no bigger than a few centimeters. Today astronomers see the universe expanding. Imagine running the expansion backwards. Billions of years ago, everything must have been packed together at enormous density. It seems incredible, but we think that the matter making up everything we see in the universe today, everything, 
the buildings, trees, people, planets, stars out to the most distant galaxies, was once crammed together into a volume smaller than this. And then, Le célèbre professeur danois Niels Bohr, son collègue britannique Sir George Thompson, l'allemand Dr. Werner Heisenberg et les plus illustres atomistes des principaux pays d'Europe, pour la France, le haut commissaire à l'énergie atomique, Francis Perrin, successeur de M. Joliot-Curie. And it was felt that such an endeavor would help bring warring nations together and attract European scientists to stay in Europe. Le prix Nobel de physique, M. Félix Bloch, a présidé la cérémonie de la pose de la première pierre de l'Institut européen pour la recherche nucléaire. Grande date dans l'histoire de l'Europe. But its birth was not without problems. The beginning of CERN was very difficult and this is forgotten nowadays because uh, the past always looks bright. It was very difficult to agree on what the role of such a laboratory should be where it should be. In fact, you can read in the minutes that during these discussions, one of the delegates broke down weeping. One of the key figures at its birth was Isidore Rabi. Rabi was involved also in building the atomic bomb in the States during the war. And he gave a speech here and said, the uh, establishment of CERN is a certain compensation for what physicists have done to building the bomb. By the mid-1950s, local villagers were getting a taste of the sheer scale of what was going on. The first of CERN's epic transport operations was underway. Operations that now have become part of their lives. Moment historique. Mise en marche du plus puissant briseur d'atomes du monde. Mise au point par un savant du CERN, projette une bouteille de champagne contre le mur de protection de l'anneau du synchrotron, dont la mise en marche est symbolisée par des effets de lumière. Monsieur Oppenheimer visited the moon. With unstoppable momentum, CERN had already begun what was at the time Europe's biggest civil engineering project, the Large Electron Positron Collider, the LEP. Deep underground, 27 kilometers in circumference, straddling both Switzerland and France, it would be the Lord of the Rings. CERN is building the largest, most powerful collider the world has ever known. So powerful that at the moment of particle impact, hitherto unimaginable temperatures will be reached. So much energy will be massed together that CERN expects to produce a black hole every second. And yet, because quantum physicists working at CERN deny the arrow of mass and information in the universe, they ignore what will be the real effects of those black holes for the Earth.